They discovered it, they read it, and they applied it. It's the golden thread that connects the titans of the self-development industry. The source that spawned millions of millionaires. The original blueprint to success. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. It's a classic. A classic. <laughs> and I love Think and Grow Rich. I love it. It's, it's right here. I mean, I, it's one of my favorite books of all time. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It takes a burning desire, a vision, a goal. If you are considering joining a program where you get to learn how to affect someone else's life, there is absolutely no better institution than the Napoleon Hill Institute to help you get to that next level. We are on a mission. We are on a mission to transform lives all over the world. Our goal is to impact billions of lives and to disrupt the self-help and personal development industry. Join us at the Napoleon Hill Institute and let's change the world together. Well, hello everyone and welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. We had a great session earlier when the amazing Johnny Lloyd came on and gave us some great takeaways on affirmations, on applied faith, and our next guest, who I really admire greatly, um, is the one and only, I'm going to give you a little bit of his background. He has such an incredible bio that I'm sure you all got a copy of, and his name is Professor Philip Bond, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of his background, and then he's going to come on today and tell you and give you some amazing takeaways on the science of personal achievement and from his experience dealing with great leaders of the world, billionaires, very successful corporations all over the world. And so uh, Philip Bond is a professor of creativity and innovation at the University of Manchester also a visiting professor in the departments of engineering, mathematics, and computer science at Bristol. He's also a visiting fellow in Oxford Industrial and Applied Mathematics Center, where he lectured on both signal processing, cryptography, and um, he, Philip, also chaired the era of mathematics. He's also um, been recognized and holds a world record for the matrix memorization of the number pi and recognized by the World Memory Sports Council. He had, has advised the Prime Minister's Council for Science and Technology and, and many, many more. He's also got two Guinness World Records. And um, I just think he's probably one of the smartest people I've ever met. And we get along very well. So I want to introduce you. Come on up here, Professor, Professor Philip. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much indeed. It's lovely to be here today. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's really a great privilege and pleasure to be able to speak to you all. And what I'm going to talk to you today is a little bit from my experience, uh, having the privilege of working with a lot of very successful people in an enormously wide range of domains over many years. What are some of the things that they have in common? And when one examines that, when one's thoughtful about it, one realizes that the thing that they have in common that is most pronounced is their mindset. And so I'm going to talk to you about the success mindset today that people have. And here is the great thing about success mindset. Uh, you can develop your mindset. It is absolutely developable. And if you change your mindset, you will change your life, you'll change life 
in a positive way for those around you and you'll change your ability to get things done. And, and so that is what we're going to talk about today. Because we're talking about Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich, I'm going to give you some quotes. And those quotes will come principally from some, uh, some billionaires because Napoleon Hill was influenced by Carnegie and speaking to 400 people, including some of the world's top uh, industrialists. But the, the focus today is really, it's, uh, it's very important that I emphasize that it's very important that you decide what success means to you personally and that you follow your dream. And that your dream is a thing that you create in your head and nobody else uh, is going to be involved in that in the sense that you don't necessarily have to follow anyone else's path. So what I want to do before we go any further is just start you with an exercise. I would just like you to just shut your eyes and imagine, if you will, that you are, so just shut your, your eyes, just relax in your chair, uh, wherever you are, shut your eyes and imagine, if you will, that you are looking down on the earth uh, in outer space from a space station. Imagine that there's a space station, you're looking down and you can see the planet Earth. It's very beautiful, blue marble it's called by NASA. And you can see the blue of the oceans, you can see the greens of the continents, you can see the yellow of the Sahara, you can see cities down below. And now I just want you to imagine that in your mind, as you're looking down, you're relaxing, in your mind, you can, you're, you're moving forward in time, maybe five years, maybe 10 years, some future period. And you're looking down on the Earth at a future period. And now I want you to bring yourself down from the space station anywhere that you would like to be on Earth. It might be somewhere in a city, it might be a park, it might be in a rainforest, anywhere that you would like to be. And just imagine yourself there for a second. And imagine now that you have already achieved at least one of the things that you really want to achieve in life. So one of the things that you really care about is in existence in this future world. And I just want you to imagine it and see it and think about it and feel, how do, how do you feel? Ask yourself, how do I feel? Now this thing is in my life. And it might be that what you want in your life is a successful business, or it might be money, or it might be relationships, it might be a sporting success. Whatever it is, imagine that you have it in that future and feel the feeling of having that thing in your life. Okay, that's your exercise. So just sit there and just feel it. Just think about one thing that you really care about, that if in 10 years' time in your life you had that thing, you feel that that would be tremendous for you. And now you can just open your eyes and just become aware of how you feel. And if you're feeling now really relaxed and good and happy, that's the natural state you should be in when you think about your goals. The natural state that you should be in when you think about the things that you want to bring into your life, bring into the world, bring value into the world, is one of feeling good. And one of the reasons that some people achieve enormous amounts is that they think a lot about their goals. They think about what they like and they learn over time that when they think about these things, they feel good. And guess what? If you feel good, you tend to repeat things that make you feel good. So they think a lot about what they want. They think a lot about how they're going to feel when they get it. They think a lot about the finished result. And when that happens, they feel great. So they keep repeating that. And by repeating it, they build that into their brain. And as they build that into their brain, uh, they tend to actualize it in the world. So that's a lot of what success is. And that's true of Olympic athletes. It's true of billionaires. It's true of built people building charities. Whatever it is you might want to do, just building a better home. If you start to think about it, and see it in your mind as it's already done and have the feeling that it's already there, then you start to build that into your life. And that was really the, the key to Napoleon Hill's message, is that if you have the discipline to build that into your life, and it can be an easy discipline if you enjoy thinking about things going well and enjoy thinking about a positive future, it's actually a very easy thing to do. Uh, then you can start to build that and actualize it in, in your life. And that was really the great, if you like, the great secret that Carnegie told him. So we're going to be discussing that. That's a mindset, really, a mindset. And the natural state, I emphasize, is when you think about things you like, you feel good. And if you think about things you don't like, which is sadly what a lot of people do, which is very easy to do in this modern world, if you think about things you don't like, you will feel not good. So our, one of our key goals 
And this is really, the whole book is, is around this, I would say, uh, Thinking Grow Rich says this, you, you need to start to think about the things you want. And you need to start to think about how you bring value into the world for yourself and for those around you. Those are the key things. And as you start to dwell on that, you will find ways to bring that into reality. So what did a few other billionaires at this, around the time or a little bit later than Carnegie say about money? Let's just discuss some of the things about, about success in general. And for those of you who are interested in, in, in money, uh, because money is a very specific form of part of what we have in life, what did they say? So Rockefeller said, I don't think that there's any quality so essential to success of any kind as the quality of perseverance. It overcomes almost everything, even nature. And Think and Grow Rich starts off with multiple stories, all of which are designed to teach you the importance of perseverance. My personal experience seeing uh, people who've either become billionaires or people who have uh, achieved great things in sport is that they have tremendous, tremendous perseverance. They don't quit. They will pivot. Yep. Yep. They will find another way. They will go around and skirt obstacles. And if they think there's a, a better way to achieve something, they'll do it. Uh, but they don't quit. And deciding that you won't quit is commitment. When I did Ironman many years ago, my coach said to me, the last word of advice that he had was, at some point, this is going to really hurt. It's going to really, really hurt. He was right about that, by the way. It really hurt. And he said, at, at, at that point, um, you have to continue unless you're medically ill. And by the way, in the Ironman I, I did many years ago, 50% uh, of people didn't finish the Ironman at all. And there were literally people being carted off uh, it, it, into ambulances. It was very hot. It was 96 degrees, very hot, and a lot of dehydration going on. So uh, it, it's, it, he said, unless you are actually physically ill, I don't care how much it hurts. I don't care if you crawl, you get over the line. And he said, if you don't do that, if you think that you can come back and do another Ironman and, and finish, it's going to be really tough or impossible because you'll have learned that when it gets tough, you quit. So he said, just don't quit. And it got really painful. About mile 18, it was really, really painful. It's hard to describe how painful it was. And I just remember what my coach said, and I gritted it out, and I did my Ironman. And I think that's a really key thing. At the beginning of the book, it's very emphasized, and I've seen it time and time again. So uh, regard it as good advice from Napoleon Hill, good advice from Rockefeller. Decide that you are going to commit. Decide that you're going to be someone who doesn't quit. You can pivot all you want. You can change what you want in life. That's all fine. Quitting is the following thing. Quitting is deciding to stop because it's uncomfortable. Pivoting is saying there's a better way or even another thing I can do that I now prefer. That's fine. It, but, but quitting is a thing that people do because it's un, that something is uncomfortable. They decide to do a thing, it's uncomfortable, and they stop just because it's uncomfortable. Decide you won't do that. The ability to deal with people is as purchasable a commodity as sugar or coffee, and I'll pay more for that ability than for any, under the, any other under the sun. That's another Rockefeller quote. And... Carnegie says the same thing. And if you read a little more, it's reflected in Think and Grow Rich very much by Napoleon Hill. But if you read a little around his conversations with Carnegie, Carnegie was very clear. Carnegie said that the way you build successful businesses, and this is very true, whether you want to build a charity, whether you want to build a successful home, is cooperation. Humans work best when they cooperate, when they operate harmoniously is the way that Carnegie put it. And that's what a mastermind is. A mastermind group is a set of people that have decided that they're going to work together. And in life, we humans just do way, way better when we cooperate. And so someone who is able to work really well with people is extremely valuable. In Carnegie's organization, Charlie Schwab was a legend. He became, of course, the head of the steel, con the steel conglomerate that, that Carnegie sold and, uh, and Schwab built that. And uh, he, was, he was a legend in his own lifetime for being so extraordinarily agreeable. And so one of the, the, the second thing you, you want to realize is that your personal qualities 
around dealing with other people are perhaps the, the single most valuable thing that you can build. And the simplest way to deal well with other people is to treat them very well uh, at all times, to respect them and to work harmoniously with them. And that is, that is uh, really a, a very important thing. And so the third is Rockefeller said, if your only goal is to become rich, you'll never achieve it. And this is, this is also really implicit in Think and Grow Rich. Because in Think and Grow Rich, early on, uh, in my copy, it's on page 14, but early on, you're given a six-point plan. If you, want, if you want to make a lot of money, you'll succeed and achieve at something. Here is what you must do. And one of the things you must do is figure out what is the value you are going to create in this world in order to get the, in return for the money that you wish to receive, if it's money. There are other things you can do in life than make money. But Think and Grow Rich tends to talk more about money than most other things, but the principles really are the same. So what are, what is the value you're going to create? And Napoleon Hill repeatedly says, you, you should not expect to get something for nothing. You must exchange massive value for the money you're going to get. This is a very positive principle, and this is what Rockefeller is also referring to. It's If you want success, uh, particularly in business, you have to go one step beyond to a meta level and say, in order to have success, that's great. I would like to make money. Wonderful. I'm now going to focus on creating huge value for other people. And the more you focus your life on creating value for other people, the easier and more successful your life is going to be in every way. What did, uh, what did Getty say about success? Well, Getty said, the man who comes up with a means of doing or producing almost anything better, faster, or more economically has his future and his fortune at his fingertips. There are two ways mentioned in Think and Grow Rich, two or three ways in which you might uh, make a lot of money or have a tremendous career or achieve what you want. And one of them is, and so there's a discussion there on creativity, and one is do something entirely new. And the other is do something which already exists and just do it a lot better. And on the whole, uh, it, it, it is uh, the case that it's very effective to do both. So most of the successful people I know, whether this is in sport, and so I'll give you an example, the absolutely tremendous cyclist, Chris Boardman. Um, so I'll give you a sports example. Chris Boardman uh, won a gold medal in, in the Olympics in cycling, and he said that uh, his, his daily focus was, how do I get better? How do I improve? He's the person that led the entire effort in the British Olympics where we went from being laughed at as a joke, as a, as a team that was thought incapable of winning any medal. Uh, he took us really to a, a point where we, where I think we still remain in the Olympics. We are the, the, probably the, the team to beat with huge numbers of gold medals. And that was done by uh, deciding to have marginal gains, to be superb at everything we could be superb at, and to look for steady incremental progress. And, and in addition to that, you say, are there things that we can do that will give me a really big gain? But on a daily basis, successful people, and this is true, the traders I met who became very successful, it's true of sports people, it's true of their coaches, they say, what is a thing I could do today that is going to add a small increment to my performance? What's going to add a, a 0.1 of a percent today? And if I can just stack up 0.1% improvements, 0.1% better today the way I deal with people. 0.1% better in my sleep, 0.1% better in watching my diet. Stack up little increments in your life and, and they become enormous over time. So focus on that. And if you can find a way in business or in anything that you're doing to do things better or more economically than anyone else, you can absolutely get paid for the value you create. Amazon, I think, is a superb example of just how much value can be created by doing things better. People have been selling goods forever. Amazon created a, a way of doing it that's more convenient and cheaper in many instances. And that creates trillions of dollars of value around the world. So there you go, that's an example. Getty said the individual who wants to reach the top in business must appreciate the might and force of habit. He must be quick to break those habits that can break him and hasten to adopt those practices that will become the habits that help him achieve the success he desires. And in Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill is, is very explicit about this 
developing habits is really what you want to be focusing on much of the time. You want to think, what are the things that will serve me? What are the habits? And a lot of the time, you don't know what the habits are that you should have. And that's why we're meeting here. We have these meetings. So that if you're interested in learning, what are the, what are the habits of mindset and thought that I should have if I want to live a richer, more fulfilling life? This is why we have these meetings, so you can learn from other people. We're all learning all the time, all the time, all the time. And so one of the things you can do if, if you have a specific interest in life, whether it's you want to be a superb academic, or if you want to be uh, have more money, build a better business, go ask people who know how to do it and say, what are the, what are the things that you think will help and build those habits in your life? Here's, here's a habit I teach all of my clients, and I ask all my clients before they get out of bed to think every morning of three things for which they're grateful. And uh, every single morning, the first thing to work on is your attitude. No exceptions. Every single morning, uh, before you get out of bed, work on your attitude. And the more advanced thing, after they've been doing that for maybe six months, is I say, add blessings. So you wake up and you, you, you give gratitudes for the things in your life, and you send out blessings. And if you do that, you prime your mind to build value into the world around you. And, and, and it clears out a lot of blockers. So build wealth as a byproduct of your business success. If wealth's your only objective in business, you'll probably fail. That's Getty agreeing, note, very much with Rockefeller. So if you really want to be successful in business, start it's great, good, but start to look at it. And again, I emphasize this is very clear in everything Napoleon Hill writes. Start to think about the value you're going to create in the world for other people. That, that the wealth comes as a byproduct of you creating value. The more value you can create for other people, the more they will exchange money for the value you're giving them. And that's a win-win situation. So he, he's very clear and it's very important. You say, I want to have a situation which everybody wins. I'm going, to, I'm going to, if I want to make money or I want anything else in life, I'm going to want relationships, personal relationships with people. I'm going to do it by creating value for those other people and everything else will flow. And finally, Getty said, people who don't respect money don't have any. Money is a very particular thing in this world. And some people don't respect money. Some people don't respect success. And those people who don't respect money will find it very hard to acquire and very hard to keep. And one of the things about people who succeed financially is that they respect money and they have a different way of looking at it. If you want to know the, it, it, the simplest question you can ask anyone is if you were to win $10 million tomorrow, what would you do with it? And most people will say, well, I mean, you, you'll meet people and they'll say, well, the first thing I do, three things. The first thing I do is quit my job. Second thing is I'd buy a nice car. And the third thing is I'd buy a better house. All very understandable. But I've, I've done this. I've asked this question to, to very successful people in business. And the first thing they say is, well, I'd invest in the following thing. Very successful people think of money as a tool for investing. And everyone else thinks of money as a thing by which they can consume. And if you want to accumulate money, my, my, my advice, and again, this is absolutely from Think and Grow Rich, is begin and Carnegie begin to see money as something that you can use as a tool to invest to build more money. And then you can decide what you do with it. A lot of very wealthy people give their money away to charity. Last time I checked, 8% of the US population are employed in charitable foundations of one sort or another. So it's, it's, it's a big thing. But you have to have a positive attitude toward money and you have to have a positive attitude to success in your life. And if you don't have those things, it's very, very difficult to succeed. Uh, finally, I want to talk about Bunker Hunt. And then, so we'll, we'll, we'll just have thought, he was, he was another very wealthy man, at one time the wealthiest man in the world as well. And he said, first, decide what you want specifically. And second, decide if you're willing to pay the price to make it happen and then pay the price when he was asked. What does it take to be successful? A lot of people say, well, that's kind of, that's cute. But tell me really, how did you make all that money? And I want to reread that quote because if you, if you absorb the wisdom in that quote, 
life's going to get a lot easier for you. So he said, decide what you want specifically and decide if you're willing to pay the price. A lot of people, when they decide they would like a thing, it's a wish. Everyone, uh, and again, this is in Think and Grow Rich. Everyone would like, pretty much everyone, would like more money. What, what many people would like is that somebody just hands it to them without them having to do anything. In other words, with no price attached. And what Hunt says, and this is true for, I think, all success, is there is going to be a price. There is some price you have to pay. Okay. And a lot of people are unwilling to pay the price. They, they see the upside. They see the upside to, you know, if they go on a diet, they see the upside to being healthier and losing weight. But the price is you have to eat chicken breast and broccoli a lot. You don't go out. Uh, you can't drink alcohol and you have to exercise and there's a, there's a cost. And if they're not, people aren't prepared to pay the cost, they will yo-yo diet, often for years. So Bunker Hunt's formulation of success, I think is extremely important. If you decide as a thing you want in your life, you need to decide whether you're willing to pay the price. And you might not be. A, a lot of people don't want to become billionaires. It's not their big focus. And they wouldn't pay the price required to, to do it or to build a big business, and that's fine. What you have to do when you decide on the goal is you have to decide what is the price and are you willing to pay it, okay? And if you can decide what you think the price is gonna be for you to succeed in absolutely anything you want and whether you're willing to put in the price, and the price often is, are you willing to put in maybe 10,000 hours of working at that to get really good? Are you willing to put, pay that price? If you're willing to pay that price, chances are you're going to succeed enormously. So when I start to talk to people about success, the first thing I want I, I do is I say, be thoughtful about your success. The starting point of thinking grow rich is what do you really want? And why do you want it? And to say, you can have almost anything you want. You can't necessarily have everything you want, but you can have almost anything you want if you start to figure out what it is. And the stopping point for most people in life is that they never really sit down and think what it is they want. You can test people very easily on this. You just say, I would like you to spend a weekend and sit and write down for a weekend everything you can think that you would like in your life in, 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 in as much detail as you can. And, and, and I have clients that will happily do that, but a lot of people you'll find will go, wow, weekend, think about what, no, I, I'm too busy. I don't have a weekend. And you say, well, okay, how about you spend an afternoon on it? And you're gonna very quickly discover a lot of people are highly resistant to sitting and writing down what they want. And here's, here's a basic rule. If, if you really want to bring things into your life that you want, you're going to have to sit down and start to think about what it is you want. And a great way is sheet of paper, or sheets of paper, start writing it down. And if you find that you're resistant to the idea of spending more than two minutes writing down what you want, you have blockers. And the first reason people don't achieve much is they don't have a definite purpose. They don't know what they want. And the second main reason, and the one that I spot a lot with people, is that they have blockers. They have a set of beliefs or a set of values that are blocking them from taking action and moving in that direction. And a lot of what you have to do if you want to be very successful, once you've figured out what you want, a lot of what you have to do is get rid of your blockers. And so a lot of Think and Grow Rich is telling you how to do that, specific exercises to do it. And so uh, success and successful living really starts with you being thoughtful about what you really want in your life in all areas. It's not just money. In fact, money for most people is a thing that they would like to have enough, that they have financial freedom, they don't have to worry about it and focus on the rest of their life. And that's absolutely fine. Um, money can and should be part of your thinking in life, but you want to aim for personal growth. For those of you who are familiar with uh, Abraham Maslow's work, you'll know that he said we have essentially five levels in, in, a, in, in the Maslow period, five levels of human development. And the first four are deficiency needs, starting right at the bottom, do you have food, water? And the, and, and the second is, do you have security, a feeling of security, safety, shelter? The third level essentially is, do you have comfort and, uh, and a sense of belonging to a group? And the fourth level is, uh, more or less, do you start to uh, bring into your life um, bigger, better things and uh, have uh, have relationships and start to think about things like build, leaving a legacy and so on. But the top level is self-actualization and it's really in two parts. The first level of self-actualization is becoming as a, as a person 
the best person you can be in the sense of developing yourself, really using your talents and bringing value into the world by developing yourself growth, in other words, personal growth. And the second level is what I would call uh, a spiritual level. And I'm going to define that. It's not a religious thing. It's, it's, it's my, my, I'm going to define that spiritual for me means love and joy and kindness. And you want to be bringing into your life love and joy and kindness. And you can imagine a metaphorical God. And a metaphorical God says, well, man's going to have all these deficiency needs. And deficiency need is a thing that you really notice if you don't have it. So if you don't have food, you notice it, you get hungry. If you don't have friends, you notice it, you get lonely. And, uh, and so on and so forth. So deficiency need is a thing that you can actually satisfy. If you don't have food, you eat a meal, you're okay. If you have some friends, great. And deficiency needs are the first four levels. And many, many people spend their entire life totally focused on their deficiency needs. And you have to cover them. It's extremely important. M money will cover most of your deficiency needs. So metaphorical God, if you imagine, says, well, I'm going to give man a tool to meet his deficiency needs. Man can go out and get money and create money and work for it. And if you've got money, you can meet your deficiency needs. But man's going to have a higher level, developing himself and a spiritual level. And if you, if you try to buy love or buy friendship or buy kindness or buy joy, you can't do it. In fact, if you try to buy love, you won't get any. If you try to buy respect, people laugh at you behind your back. You have to earn respect. And so the way you can create things in your highest level of Maslow's pyramid is you give them away. So metaphorical God, if you like, says the way you're going to get friends is to be a friend. Give away friendship. You want love in your life? Be very loving. Give away love. And you want joy and kindness? Give away joy and kindness to everyone you meet. Leave everyone with the feeling that they're better off because they met you for every, every, at every moment of the day. If you live like that, here's another thing that metaphorical God says says, I'm going to make it completely easy for mankind to do this. I'm going to make it completely easy. All you have to do is create it and desire to create it. If you want to, to create kindness to other people, all you have to do is think, I'm going to be kind. That's it. There's no cost. You don't have to work at it. Just do it. So we want to move in our lives to operating at that level. And Maslow said that it's very hard to move to that level if you're feeling insecure or you can't pay your bills. In other words, what you have to do is make sure that you are generating enough wealth, at least, to feel secure in the other areas of your life. You need to generate value for everyone around you because that is how you become a member of a group that appreciates you, that respects you, and so on. And you want to just send love out to everyone you meet and kindness and make everyone else that you ever meet feel better about themselves. So for me, that's what I tell people um, I believe that they should think around. I don't tell anyone what success should mean for them. Everyone is unique. But if you want to have a basis upon which to think about it, that's a good place to start. How does that tie into Think and Grow Rich? Well, look at Andrew Carnegie, his life. He made a lot of money, and he did it all by building value. Uh, he, he decided that the way he would create a, uh, his wealth was to create a company that could scale massively and create huge value. And instead of having a small company and pushing up prices for steel, he would have a huge company that was extremely efficient, which would mean that he could increase the amount of steel used. And he didn't have to push his profit margins up to make money. He, he just sold more steel and he lowered the price of steel consistently. As he lowered it, demand went up. As demand went up, he could build more bigger steel mills, got benefits of scaling, could lower the price. So what happened is he created huge value in, in the United States. America got built using steel and he created that huge amount of steel and he got his wealth uh, by the, the profit margin times the volume increase he had. So what he did was create huge value and then he gave it all away, mostly during his lifetime. He, he'd given 90% away of his wealth away during his lifetime and famously, of course, Think and grow rich. What he told Napoleon Hill was the most precious thing I have to give is knowing how to do this. Okay. So, so that's, that's an example of someone who, who definitely thought a lot about value. So what are some of the qualities of successful people? 
Well, I'm going to give you a list of, of, of I, I, was, I was thinking about many of the people I've met. I, I, I really have a huge privilege in my life to meet tremendously successful people in, in many, many domains of life. And I love meeting successful people. I, I love meeting people who um, are, are, are focused on doing something in their life, whether it's a big thing or a little thing, it doesn't matter. I think it's just wonderful when people uh, are thoughtful about doing a thing and then they, they go out and achieve it. And over the years, I've just paid attention to, well, what's their mindset? What, what do they do? What helps them to do this? And one of them is they're ambitious to do something or be something. Uh, when I was a young man, I, I went for a, a job interview. There were about 30 people milling around. We're gonna, we were going to be interviewed. And a guy who joined the firm two years before came out and said, what do you think they're looking for? And everyone said, well, they're looking for you know, someone who's smart. And he said, well, that's, that's helpful. But that's not what they're looking for. I said, well, they're looking for someone with a really good degree. He said, no, it's helpful, but it's not what they're looking for. And people kept throwing out different ideas. And he said, they're looking for one thing. They're looking to see who's really ambitious. Because if you're really ambitious, you're going to have weaknesses. Everyone has weaknesses. And the ambitious person is going to work on their weaknesses and focus on their strengths. And that's going to be the person that is going to really achieve a lot. That was very, in my opinion, very good advice. Because the first thing is, that the people I've met who are very successful absolutely are ambitious. And uh, that's a perfectly good thing. To wish to be uh, more than you currently are or to have more than you are or to produce more value in the world is, is a perfectly good thing. They know exactly what they want. This builds over time. Um, I, I know people who've achieved great things and they didn't start out with necessarily a huge vision, but they were very clear on the next thing that they wanted and they built one thing to another to another to another. Clarity is absolutely essential. And the reason for this, again, totally emphasized throughout thinking grow rich, you need clarity. It is, it, you should have the habit of saying throughout your life, what is it I want? And by the way, it changes as you, as, you, as you move through life, what you want can change. And you need to have clarity on it. If you don't know what you want, well, you'll get exactly what it is that you have clarity about, which is not a lot. So, so I, I, you know, when I, whether it's I meet Olympic champions or Formula One people working in Formula One and engineers or, or drivers or whoever um, people in business, the more they're successful, the more I find they have clarity about uh, about what they have to do, and the more they have discipline about doing it. In my experience, successful people think far far more than most people do. I know a lot of people, and they will say, I, I think all day long, I get all these emails, I answer. That, that isn't thinking, in my opinion. That's not really deep thinking. So it, it, it requires some thought. But I'm really talking here about deep thinking, going away and, and sitting down with sheets of paper and asking yourself regularly the following two questions is a very good way, place to start. So the following two questions are, what, might I, what are my next steps? What I want, knowing what I want, what next step could I do to move me in that direction? That's always question number one. Question number two, what can I do to improve? Improve my, my product, improve myself, improve my, my mindset, whatever. What can I do to improve? And what is a new thing that I might be able to do that I don't currently have? Or if I don't know that, who might I go and speak to where I could learn another thing that I could do that I'm not currently doing? Because all of us, we have a certain amount of knowledge, but there are other people who know things that are tremendously useful. If we only knew those things, we could do better. So go out and meet them. Figure out who you need to speak to and, and, and go and do it. Uh, successful people look for opportunities, especially in business. The really successful people I met in business are tremendously good at seeing opportunities. They see opportunities that other people just walk by all the time. And they tune themselves to see opportunities. Uh, there are very famous businessmen who talk about it and, and they just will look at a, 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 I mean, a, a simple product that everybody has and say, how could I, how could I do that differently or improve it? And you know, huge fortunes are made by someone sitting and saying, well, how could I improve a vacuum cleaner? How could I improve this service? How could I improve that service? So they have the habit of, of just looking around the world saying, how could it be better? Is there an opportunity? You can make money as a one-man band. But if you really want to make a lot of money, and I'm not saying you should, but if you do, it's much, much easier um, to, and much more effective to build a team. 
And in, in Think and Grow Rich, Carnegie says there are two really key things at an individual level you need to focus on. One is doing more than you're paid to do. And two is build a mastermind group. Uh, and so if you, you know, you can self-coach as an athlete, but Olympians have a support team around them. Don't go it alone is probably very good advice. No matter, no, no matter what your talent is, at some point you need to surround yourself with people who are going to really help you and, and who you can also help uh, to, to develop. And so develop a mindset where you're saying, uh, how do I find people who are, can help me and who can I help? You always want whatever your level to be saying, how can I help someone else? Don't, don't, don't think that mentoring or, or helping is for everyone else in the world. Start out, whatever your level, saying, how can I help someone else? Uh, successful people I know have mind-blowing resilience. I am really impressed by the degree of resilience of some people. Um, I, I, I've seen Olympic athletes, one, one, one Olympic athlete broke a wrist, uh, it was Katie Ormerod actually, and she broke a wrist uh, and decided to carry on competing uh, Jen had a very bad fracture of I think it was her talus bone the heel and I think she needed six operations to have it fixed and she came back to the next Olympics um, she'd been expected to have a, probably the best chance in the UK team of winning a gold medal at the Olympics and ended in in uh, in injury severe injury fabulous attitude just came back competed again uh, massive resilience and I've seen it in, in successful people Throughout, so this 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 idea of resilience is something that you really want to focus on in your life. You have got to decide that now that you're going to be a very resilient person. And quit versus pivot. Uh, I have met many successful people who pivot and pivot and pivot, and business people often pivot a lot, but they do not quit. Um, successful people look for high opportunity spaces. Okay, it is simply easier to succeed in some areas than others. And if you have a driving desire to succeed in one domain, by all means, follow it. But if what you want to do is, for example, succeed in business, look for a space in business uh, which is less crowded and where you can create more value more rapidly. It, and and it's, it sounds so simple and so obvious. You might say that's just common sense, surely. But most people don't do that. Most people look around and, and copy the business models of other people doing the same products. Uh, and, and then wonder why it's very, very competitive and very tough. Now, the acid, absolute acid test, and I've seen this with people, again, in many, many uh, fields, the absolute acid test is that most of them go through a severe setback. And I was sitting with uh, one of the world's top traders recently. He's trading, he said, Philip, I traded for over 30 years. He's very, very successful. And he said, uh, I, I, here is what happens, you know, there's, there's, of course, famously, most people, if they start to become professional traders, the, the, the track record is somewhere between 12 and 18 months before they're out. So it takes a lot to be a trader for 30 years. Uh, and he said that the good people, the people who have talent and really work at it, at some point, they're, they're being successful. At some point, markets humble everybody. And then a lot of people just crack. They built a lot of confidence over the years. They believe in themselves. And then, bam, all it, big hit and he said it's the people that come back from that that learn from the experience that become the really truly great traders and and that i think is a is a very very good point um that again in life if you want to succeed and this is throughout think and grow rich he's very very napoleon hill is very clear on this that that it's likely that you're going to have some serious obstacles and you need to develop the mindset to Pick yourself up, dust yourself down, and carry on. And they're willing to pay the price. Successful people figure out the price. Uh, at a minimum, it's typically work hard. Uh, master your field, work on your weaknesses, and focus on your strengths. And above all, and this is really key, uh, successful people focus on developing and maintaining, um, developing the right mindset. Your focus when you get out of bed in the morning should be your mindset. Success is 95% mindset and 5% strategy, I would say. The, the, the key difference between most Olympic champions and everyone else is their mindset. And I don't say this because it sounds cute. I say this because that's something that uh, Terry Orlick showed, I think, a long, long time ago already. If you're interested, uh, his, his book, In Pursuit of Excellence, has a lot of details. 
you can measure the the athletes physiologies and uh, you'll find that at the top level there are plenty of athletes who have equal or superior physiology to many of the world champions and when you do psychometric tests you find that world champions score way higher particularly on one thing and here it is motivation world champions are way more motivated than the people that come lower down typically and of course sometimes world champions are simply tremendously uh, talented individuals but usually the people that succeed the most and, and outside of athletics it is absolutely true the people that succeed the most are the ones who are most motivated and so the way you you become motivated if you have a low level of motivation you wait but you have something you want to achieve is you build your motivation and think and grow rich 80 percent of that book is telling you how to build light a fire under yourself so it's saying if you really want to succeed you have got to build your motivation and that's burning desire is massive motivation that's like a 10 out of 10. so really napoleon hill saying the first thing you have to have is score you know psych on a psychometric test of your motivation you should be at least a nine and preferably a ten but if you're a five or a six you're not there so the first thing you do is work on your motivation and the one of the things that most very successful people have in common is they're pretty obsessive sometimes they're very obsessive they think about the thing that they're doing and interested in all the time often to the extreme exclusion of a lot of other things and that you could say if if uh, for the for the average person the average person you know, isn't obsessive about one thing isn't super focused on one thing doesn't talk about one thing all the time and that would be a price to pay but if you are very if you really want to succeed you need a lot of focus and thoughtfulness about uh, whether it's business or whether it's uh, being successful in athletics whatever it is you need a lot of focus and the more you focus on what you want you need downtime you need breaks but the more you focus on what you want the easier success becomes so one of the things you could summarize a lot of the qualities of mindset by saying people have extremely strong frames and a frame is your intent the perspective that you hold and the emotional color or the emotional attitude that you hold toward things and what you want to do all the time is have a very effective and very strong frame so you want to have very strong intent you need to know with clarity what your intent is all the time at any minute of the day what's your intent and your intent should be focused towards your goals the perspective you have has to be one in which you're looking at things and saying this is good not this is terrible you have to have a positive outlook if you like and your emotional color should be positive and people who fail don't have clarity they don't have intent they have a perspective on life which is often very negative and an emotional color that's negative as well and that is very very unhelpful you really want to keep it very positive finally everything counts i've spoken to olympic athletes said philip um and who, who won you know silver and gold medals and so on and uh, they say you get to the point that everything counts um you know your friends will happily go out to the pub and have some beers you're like well will a beer is, is drinking a beer going to help me or hinder me as an olympic athlete and they're like hinder right don't do it and one of the prices you have to pay is you'll have to develop the mindset of uh do, for everything does this move me forward or not and you may not want to pay that price that's fair enough that's for you to decide but one of the prices you pay is saying does this help or hinder and the really successful people i know won't do a thing if, if they think it's not helpful in their goals in life they will just avoid doing it and finally they operate with self-discipline and everything that counts these are all points you can find in think and grow rich in fact in my copy of, of think and grow rich it, it's very early on it's about page 14 so we've talked a little bit about motivation um i'm going to start with attitude uh attitude is is direction it, it, it is a nautical or, or astronomical term really meaning the, meaning the direction toward a star so if you're sailing you need to in, before gps and so on you would say what's 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 the direction toward the stars so i can sail my ship 
motivation means force. It comes from the word motu, meaning force or energy. And talent's helpful in success. There's no question about it. It's helpful. But motivation and attitude are far more important. You can't sail a boat with, without knowing the destination and where there's no wind and the motor's turned off. You can't. It'll drift around uh, at best. Motivation means different things to different people. I'm not talking about that motivation that's short-term excitement. People at January 1st say, gee, I'm going to go to the gym and get fit now. That lasts two weeks. Motivation is like diesel fuel in a yacht. You can get out of port with it, but don't try sailing across the Atlantic. Your sails in your mind, the, the equivalent of sails are your imagination. And that is why throughout Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill says, imagination, imagination, imagination. It's a huge power. Uh, Kuei, the, the man that really invented uh, the idea of affirmations and of the power of uh, self-hypnosis or auto-suggestion said, imagination always beats willpower. Don't operate using willpower, operate using imagination. And the way that you operate using imagination is you attach to your thoughts, the ones you want to hold, a positive emotion. So when you think about the success that you have, you think about already achieving it, and essentially you think about the feeling that you'll have when you achieve it. And that that completely alters the way in which your brain is able to uh, enable you to, to achieve something. So dominant thought is a key feature of people who are successful. And again, think and grow rich, your uh, Napoleon Hill's taught by Carnegie that your dominant thoughts end up becoming your reality. Well, there are two ways really to, to view the world. One is, and it's a common view, the most common view is the world is a thing done to you. Uh, this mindset of, often develops as a child and people say, well, the world is kind of done to me. There's this world and I'm dropped into it somehow. I have to go to school and do this and do that. And it's out there and it does stuff. And the other way is you look around, the easiest way to do this exercise is literally right now, look around your room. And if you're in a room, every single thing there, every single thing there has been created by somebody. And every single thing that was created by somebody started as a thought. So most people look at the world as a thing that is out there and highly successful people. And this is the point of Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich. They see the world differently. They say, gee, um, Everything man may began as an idea and was created by someone. So you operate upon the world and that starts with you having a thought. And I can think, therefore I can operate upon the world. And effective people see the world as a thing that they can act upon, that they can build, that they can create. And if you, if you change your mindset from the world does stuff to me, to the world is a place that I can act upon in a positive way, you'll change your life and very fast. And that at some level is the message of Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich says, the moment you believe that, the moment you believe that you can act upon the world, that you can have a thought and that you could bring that thought into reality, the minute you do that, it starts to happen. It's easy for you. Carnegie's dominant thought wasn't to buy Skibo Castle. Carnegie wanted to make a lot of money, sure, but Carnegie decided that what he wanted to do was achieve it by creating massive value for everyone else. And I'm going to re-emphasize that uh, the way to think about everything in your life is start with how do I achieve the things I want to achieve by creating value, real, genuine value for other people. If you start to look at the world as a place in which you can help other people get value in their life, you'll find it very, very simple to start to build better relationships, have more money if that's what you want to do, and everything else will start to slot into place. So I'm going to end up with just reminding you of the two effective approaches in Think and Grow Rich to priming your mind for success. Think of some specific real thing that you want to achieve be anything, finish my degree, set a world record, to something you own, a, a car or a house, a specific concrete item, buy a specific date or an amount of money, and ask yourself, what feeling would I have if I had this? Ask yourself the feeling, then imagine a single event 
which would, were it to occur, would indicate to your mind that you had achieved it and then hold that feeling. Arnold Schwarzenegger gives a superb illustration of this. He says he used to visualize himself winning Mr. Olympia and he would be holding the trophy aloft and people would be cheering. And that is the essence of Carnegie's method, which is on, I think, page 14. And you should do this essentially every day. That is really the message of Think and Grow Rich. And add to that affirmations and you'd be amazed how much you can achieve. And that really is how most successful people operate. Whether they're aware of it or not, they see in their mind the outcome they want. They feel really good about it. And when they do that repeatedly, they move that into form. So with that, I'll hand over to Fiona. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Philip. This has been incredible. And I love how you tied it up at the end because I, I was taking notes after notes. And, and then I highlighted what really stood out for me. And you just wrapped it up with that message as well. It's, it's focus on value, you know, as, as we coach people and as they're moving along in their journey, say, well, where's the money? Where's this? Where's that? Well, have you given value? Have you given serve, service? Have you served anyone? Have you asked for money? So most people are focused on getting money instead of focused on serving and giving value. This is so important. And I didn't get into this business for money. I got into this business for service. And then just as you taught us today, the money takes care of itself. So, and then the second thing that I, that really stood out today for me again, was this idea of being really resilient during the storms, during the hard times. So remember that resiliency and focus on serving and adding value. This has been incredible. Philip, thank you so much. I can't wait to watch the replay and, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of you, right? You're right. Thank you very much. I'd be delighted to come back and talk in more detail about some, some other things around all of that. Thank you. Thank you. This has been amazing. Okay, everyone, go back and remember repetition. Watch the replay. Take notes. You have received gold today because I know I did. Look at all my notes. I've, <laughs> this has been amazing. So go back and watch the replay. The event is officially over tomorrow night at midnight. If you have any questions, reach out to our team. We are wrapping up tomorrow at midnight. I want to thank you. This has been an incredible week, and I will see you all soon. I decided to join NHI, Napoleon Hill Institute, because I wasn't aware that I was looking to belong to have a belonging and something bigger than where I was. And when I joined Napoleon Hill Institute, immediately I felt like I had anchored myself to something bigger than I could have ever imagined. This is a place of authenticity. It's a place of purity. And I can't think of any other place that I would rather be in terms of learning how to be a coach in the personal development industry. What's different about NHI is that all our hearts are connected. I really feel what's inside each and every single individual in NHI. As soon as I hear someone speaks, I know what's in their heart and mind. And I can feel it. The first word that I would sum up NHI, Napoleon Hill Institute, is I would say disruptive. We are disruptive. It's not a negative disruption. It's a disruption that will impact every area of your life. We are disruptive. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that the leaders in this organization they're in the study, they're in the growth, they're in the learning every single day. We see them on the calls, they're teaching us how to be coaches, how to reach the 8 billion people that we want to reach. I drifted for a very long time, for a very long time. And the worst part is that it was an addictive kind of drift. I'll say I was drifting. So you can be intellectual and drift, you can be successful and drift, you can be spiritual and drift. It's only when I 
decided to have a mentor who steered my way of thinking into channeling my feelings through a harmonic melody of life that I managed to embrace a new vision with a new feeling into encompassing a new blueprint that shaped the new reality that I live today. There's a vibration in a, in a, in a rhythm that we have that is like no other organization in the world. And I think that's the beautiful thing about this community is that we're all one, we're all equal, and everybody, everybody is supporting each other.